So, my cousin is somewhat alienated from me. We began to reconnect a little before her wedding. So imagine my astonishment when she sent me a letter claiming that she wanted me to be her maid of honour instead of her best friend, Eleanor. I do not know. I thought the whole thing was bizarre. But I went ahead and did it. Our grandmother was going to pay for the whole wedding. So, can you believe that after the wedding, guess who received an invoice for half of it because I was the maid of honour in charge of? Ah, uh, organising the bachelorette party which cost a fortune. Me, I get the invoice and I have to pay for it, so I'm not going to let this go. So I march up to grandma and my estranged cousin to tell them this. Quinn, I'm 30. I don't usually seek advice, but I'm now feeling apprehensive and could benefit from some outside perspective. You know, my cousin Claire has just returned to my life after a long absence. I'm scared that if I don't play my cards correctly, I'll lose her again. It all began when we were kids. I was the only child, and my parents split when I was five years old. Claire was also an only child. And while she was younger than me, she was seven years old when her parents separated. I had previously lived alone with my mother for almost four years at the time. So I understood precisely what she was going through. So. Even though we had only seen each other at family functions, I grew closer to her after that because I didn't want her to have to go through it alone. Even as children, we were often able to spend a significant amount of time playing without the need for adult supervision. Claire's mother is my Aunt Harper on my mother's side. Harper struggled with alcohol and PPD for many years. Claire's birth exacerbated the situation. That meant that despite being the family's primary earner, my uncle Luke was often forced to take up a lot of Harper's slack around the house, which he was naturally furious about. During the divorce, he was not afraid to use it against Harper. He was set to be granted full custody without visitation and Harper became estranged from the family. Most of the family supported uncle Luke and they continued to help him financially for Claire's sake. Nobody knows where Harper is right now. My mother blames Luke for pushing her sister away from the family, so she refused to leave the car when she dropped me off at Claire's place. She didn't want to risk seeing my uncle. Even when Claire came to our house, my mother ignored her. That afforded Claire and me a lot of alone time. And we ended up getting extremely close. That began to alter around middle school, when I was slightly older than Claire. My social life took off much before hers did. I was not attempting to ignore her. She was still my cousin and in many ways, my best friend. But I also didn't want to give up my status or popularity in middle or high school only to hang out with some of my friends for it was silly or uncomfortable. Looking back, I wonder whether I could have handled things differently. Nonetheless, I don't believe I'm bad for attempting to live my own life. It seemed like such a foolish, petty thing at the time. But my decision to go out on a few dates rather than stay out with my little cousin ended up ripping the entire family apart. Claire may have mentioned to Uncle Luke one day that I was going to a school dance and she wanted to have a sleepover that night. He conveyed it to my grandma, who chastised my mother for failing to provide Claire with the emotional support she required as a growing child. My mother went off over it she screamed at my grandma, accusing me of supplying Claire with more assistance than the rest of the family did when she needed it. I didn't know the exact details of the conversation because I could only hear my mother's end of the phone call. But I know we didn't see anyone from the family after that. Except on this one occasion, Uncle Luke. He stopped by to drop off some old clothes and toys I had given Claire. I'm not sure if my mother decided to withdraw from the family or if my grandmother and everyone else cut her off. However, we stopped attending family occasions altogether after that. After that, I never heard my mother on the phone with my aunt or grandmother. Okay, now that you've listened to that part of the story, let's proceed. After 15 years, I received an unexpected call from a band number. I generally don't respond to these questions. 
but I answered without thinking, and it was Claire. She invited me somewhere highly wonderful. We went out to lunch and scheduled a meeting a few days later, and I was very uncomfortable walking in. She was pleasant on the phone, but sometimes I thought she sounded cutting and frigid. As it turned out, I was concerned about nothing. Claire approached me and hugged me as soon as I entered the restaurant. After we sat down, she apologised for everything that had transpired and filled in the spaces. She hadn't gone out of her way to get me into trouble. As I stated, we usually hung out under close supervision, so Luke was utterly unaware of the sleepover. Claire decided to invite one of her school friends, Eleanor, instead, and Luke overheard the two of them discussing me. He asked her what she was talking about and then reported it to my grandmother without receiving all the specifics. Eventually, we both forgave each other. We were just youngsters, trying to live our lives, you know. The family made decisions that affected both of us without seeking our participation. It was good to finally clear the air. But then she gave me a tremendous surprise. She's getting married. That's correct. After the sleepover, Eleanor and Claire became extremely close and best friends. Claire began to become very attractive as they approached middle school. She was always a cute, if awkward, kid who drew some attention from Eleanor's elder brother, Zoe. I'm not sure when things started between them, but I believe they began formally dating around five years ago. And now they are attempting to tie the knot. However, this is not the only surprise you should be aware of. Claire not only invited me to the wedding, but also asked me to be her maid of honour. She said that she and Zoe would never have met if I hadn't gone to the school dance, so she feels she owes me something. In addition, she expresses a desire to re-establish our childhood friendship. I'm really touched at this point. Of course, I couldn't agree quickly enough. I've already been working hard to be the greatest maid of honour I can be. It hasn't been easy because I've been doing the majority of the work alone. Eleanor is a bridesmaid, and to say she dislikes me would be an understatement. For example, she is constantly trying to undercut everything I accomplish. I discovered this stunning Mikado wedding gown, which billows out from the waist into a sleek, nearly tulip-shaped gown. Claire looked beautiful, but Elena said it looked like I was attempting to dress her up in princess outfits like we were still kids. Claire decided to keep the clothing, but Elena kept staring at me. Based on how they kept whispering and laughing whenever we were together, I believe the other bridesmaid is Bella or Aria. They must be on Elena's side. Claire supports all of my actions, but she hasn't really defended me with Eleanor. When Claire asked for my advice on bridesmaid dresses, I discovered these lovely chiffon gowns and a bride's baby blue that almost exactly matched Elena's eyes. The waistline is tight enough to highlight Bella's figure, but the pleats help conceal Aria's lack of curves. I thought the outfits were very tasteful and appropriate for everyone wearing them. And Claire seems to agree. But when Elena saw them, she said, well, Brooklyn, by the way, my name is Brooklyn. So Brooklyn, after the wedding, we can all find a good street corner to hang out on if we need a little extra cash. At the very least, most of us will have no trouble making any. That surprised me a little, and it seemed very improper. I mean, I was nearly too astonished to respond. I hoped Claire would jump up for me, but she appeared to be struggling not to laugh. I'm just trying so hard to take this work seriously and make everyone happy. We still have the bachelorette party to attend, not to mention the wedding itself. I'm concerned that whatever I do will be wrong. I am beginning to question whether I should not have accepted this post, but it is too late to back out now. I would never do that to Claire, especially since I had only recently reintroduced her into my life and I was growing increasingly concerned that she would not defend me. Maybe she's simply trying to keep the peace, and it's all in my head. I'd like to talk to her about it, but I don't want to add to her worries about the wedding arrangements. Thank you all for your advice in my earlier article, and I've decided to stand by Claire's side.
Regardless of the circumstances, family comes first. There's a new problem with money, but I believe Claire is now solidly on my side, so everything should be fine. It began with the bachelorette party, right? Claire expressed an interest in dances, but believed going to a club was too conventional. As for me, I just wanted to make sure that everyone had a nice time and that they couldn't complain. That's when I had an idea. One of the things Uncle Luke returned to my mother after Claire, and I had finished talking, was an old Barbie cruise ship. I had given her a playset. It was one of our favourite toys to play with together. We used it with various dolls to pretend we were hosting everything from spring break parties to formal balls. I thought having Claire's bachelorette party on the water would be a great idea. I found Sapphire Moon, a local harbour crew service that provided a price. The package included a double-decker boat with a dance floor and a complete bar. I called them to make sure it was okay if we hired a couple hunky dancers to join us on the trip. But apparently, they do a lot of bachelorette parties and ours sounded quite modest compared to some of the others they've done. The only difficulty was that the entire operation was quite pricey. Eleanor is a teacher and Aria works for the local news. I mean, I make pretty good money working from home and I believe Bella does as well. But I didn't want us all to split the expense if it would be difficult for others. Even though she was rude to me, I told Eleanor about it. That's when I learned something Claire hadn't stated previously. Our grandmother agreed to have a bachelorette party in addition to the wedding. Claire and I have been so busy talking about the wedding that we hadn't had much opportunity to catch up with family. So I'd forgotten that our grandmother had always assisted her and Luke with their finances when needed, too so. So I double-checked with Claire, and she affirmed that all I had to do was save any receipts, and she'd make sure they got to our grandmother. All right. That was such a huge relief for me. Honestly, it allowed us to have the best night ever. We actually went to spend the entire night drinking and dancing against a stunning skyline. It felt like we were finally living out a boyhood dream, complete with a wonderful collection of life-size Kindles. I don't think I've ever had a more lavish experience until the wedding. I knew it would be an expensive occasion because I'd been assisting Claire with a lot of the arrangements and Zoe worked 60 hours a week and was unavailable to assist much. We chose to have it in Luke's backyard, which is quite large. We erected a massive maroon tent draped in fairy lights, and the gazebo in the centre was totally covered in orchids. It looked like something out of a fairy tale. The original purpose of a backyard wedding was to save money, but Claire claimed that Luke and our grandma kept telling her not to worry about the cost, not to worry about it at all. That allowed us to go all out with the food, we provided several options for each guest. We even went with more than one vegan option so Claire could invite more of her old college pals. When we were youngsters, we fantasised about what we'd want for our weddings, so we just started crossing things off the list one by one. We even ordered a chocolate fountain, even though neither of us would go near it while dressed in our costumes. Once we had finished putting everything together, the entire process cost at least as much as renting a venue, if not more. The elegance of the whole affair helped, but it simply put folks at ease. Eleanor had already softened her tone toward me after the bachelorette party, but she was even more appealing at the wedding. She was the first to begin clapping after my toast at the reception, and she even congratulated me later for assisting with the arrangements. She said the exact words to me. Am I? You lady may commit numerous errors, but you certainly know how to throw a party. It's a bit of backhanded praise, but for Eleanor, it's about as good as I could expect. She offered me a wink as she said it, which I found sweet. However, there is one new issue that has arisen. As it turns out, I may have hosted too fantastic a party. During the reception, Claire revealed that our grandma was unhappy with me for the bachelorette party cost and for encouraging so many expensive wedding ideas. I was perplexed, to say the least. I had been informed that everything would be ark, 
and that money would not be an issue. I understood that was simply an expression, but let's be honest, everyone has boundaries. I expected someone to say something if the cost was getting out of control. I spoke with Luke and my grandma at the wedding rehearsal and neither of them mentioned it. But Claire told me they were attempting to keep up appearances, which makes some sense. Fortunately, Claire appears to have my back on this one. She advised me to avoid our grandma since it would only lead to further issues and that she would discuss the matter with her on my behalf. She and Zoe are postponing their honeymoon so that Zoe may finish up some work. Something. We have a few weeks to figure it out and my mother warns me to be careful, but I'm not surprised. Since our disagreement, she has lost trust in most of her family members. I understand where my mother is coming from, but if no one else can, I can trust Claire. I'm astonished and perplexed right now. It's as if a weight on my chest makes it difficult for me to breathe. A few days after the wedding, I tried calling Claire to see if she had spoken with our grandmother yet. She never responded. I imagined she was relaxing and preparing for her honeymoon. I trusted her to talk to our grandma when she had time, and I didn't want her to feel rushed because she was already busy adjusting to married life. The next day, I received a letter from her in the mail. She had accompanied the letters with an itemized charge. She invoiced me for over half of the wedding expenses and charged me for the entire bachelorette party fee. That wasn't all, we discussed it, and it wouldn't be like this. I studied the letters she'd supplied, hoping for an explanation. She stated that she spoke with our grandmother and they both agreed that I should be willing to pay in exchange for being selected maid of honour, even though everyone knew Eleanor should have had the job. Well, since I had stolen Eleanor's ticket to the spotlight at her brother's wedding, they felt it was only fair that I bear the entire cost of the battle party and the bridesmaid outfits, which I had chosen myself. My contribution to the wedding expenses included the quote and cost of honour for playing such an important role in the event. I don't know what to say or feel right now. I recognise that Eleanor should have been the maid of honour, but it was not my decision. I believed Claire had my back, but I felt betrayed. I spent a lot of time assisting Claire with the wedding, and I was by her side the entire day to support her whenever she became stressed. At the same time, I'm concerned that confronting her about it may harm the family especially because I only recently regained custody of them. I could afford the invoice if I took out a little payday loan, but I know the interest rate would be high. And I'm terrified to ask my mother for help because she'll lash out and make things worse. I'm not sure if I should bear the burden on my own or talk to Claire about it, risking losing my cousin again. What shall I do? The whole wedding thing is starting to seem odd, I nearly don't know where to start. As much as I wanted to keep the peace, I followed people's advice this time and approached Claire about the invoice. Because her letters claimed the concept came from my grandmother, I expected her to understand and try to advocate on my behalf. But I was mistaken. Claire stood by her choice to charge me for both the wedding and the battle party. She replied that many of the ideas were mine and that if I cared so much about having the wedding we dreamed of as kids, I should care enough to contribute to its cost as well. She stated that it was only fair because I enjoyed the wedding arrangement's elegance as much as she did. She also mentioned that my mother and I would not have had the opportunity to reconnect with the family if she had not invited me to the wedding. I know she's right, but it still doesn't feel like something I should be charged for. I've always desired to reunite with my family, but I also believe that a family is something that cannot be priced, and they are now doing precisely that. Then the strange part happened. I was attempting to clear my head and figure out what to do, so I decided to occupy myself with some mundane tasks. That always helps me blank out for a moment and come back fresh. So I decided to spend some time emptying out my jump folder where I discovered an email from someone named Quentin. Apparently, he's Art Harper's new spouse 
and he wants my mother's phone number so he can contact her. I immediately thought something terrible had occurred to my aunt. But that was completely incorrect. As it turns out, Harper has been attempting to reconnect with the family for several weeks. However, she did not have anyone resend their contact information, so she used social media. None of my aunts used it, and Luke disregarded her messages. Claire was the only one she managed to reach. She had noticed on social media that Claire was getting married, and she was hoping to go. Claire told her no. Harper has been battling with depression ever since. Quentin stated that she has not started drinking because of it, but he is concerned that she may do so again. Since Claire allegedly stated during their chat that we were communicating again, he hopes I'll put him in touch with my mother so she can assist. This almost feels like a second betrayal. Claire understands how much it would mean to my mother to hear Harper is doing well and attempting to connect with her family. Yet she has never revealed any of this to me. Given what has happened with the wedding invoice, this additional revelation makes me question what more Claire is hiding. I emailed Quentin back and provided him with my mom's phone number. I believe I've had enough of Claire doing all the talking for me regarding the invoice. I'm going to go to my grandmother and discuss this with her directly. I am really excited. I'm not sure how it happened, but it appears that everything is finally sorted. Not only will I not be paying the payment, but it appears that I will be able to reunite with my family. A few of them, at least. I was correct in suspecting Claire of concealing information, and I was not the only one she was attempting to deceive. When I spoke with my grandma, I discovered that most of what Claire told me prior to the wedding was genuine. My grandma had genuinely stated that expenses would not be an issue. And she meant it. Everything has already been paid for, including weddings and bachelorette parties. She never grumbled about the cost. So she was as surprised as I was to learn about the invoice. She was likewise astonished to learn about Aunt Harper. Claire seemed to have kept their communication private. I don't understand why she did that to her mother. My grandmother and I saw answers. My grandmother organised a large family meeting. She invited me, my mother, and my two aunts, who brought their husbands and another cousin. Claire and Zoe were undoubtedly the guests of honour. Aunt Harper and Quentin also received invitations. After I sent Quentin her phone number, Harper and my mother resumed their conversation. However, they reside outside of town, and Quentin was unable to take time off work on such short notice, so Harper drove over alone. We agreed to meet in Uncle Luke's backyard, which seemed natural. My grandmother hesitated to put him and Harper together after so much time apart. But Luke consented after learning that she was now sober, and she resolved to be firm and civil about it. It was amazing to see them finally meet after so long. They were both really mature about it, and Aunt Harper even stated that she had no hard feelings regarding the custody issue because of where her life was at the time. Hearing that made my mother feel less concerned about Luke. Things didn't feel too tense until Claire and Zoe arrived. My grandmother has always been a powerful woman. She was raised with money, and she does not display much emotion. We had family troubles here and there when I was younger, so I've been to similar family meetings. She just always takes entire control of them, and no one interrupts her when she is speaking. That's why I was surprised when she asked me to start. She wanted me to walk everyone through everything that happened, from the first call I received from Claire to the invoice. However, I am sure I missed things here and there. Claire did not make eye contact with me the whole time. She just stood there, staring at the ground, and I noticed a few things. Claire has a nervous tick and fidgets slightly. She wasn't doing it much. But I observed her do it occasionally, and I emphasised the cost of things like the boats, the chocolate fountain, and so on. The other thing I noticed was Zoe. He seemed agitated from the moment he walked in, but his eyes widened whenever I mentioned Elena's name. 
I couldn't quite make out his expression, but it appeared to be something between wrath and dread. When I concluded the story, everyone's eyes were on Claire. I mean, she was quite quiet. She was trying to think of something to say, and to my surprise, Uncle Nicholas, my Aunt Addison's husband, spoke first. Oh, so what about the money we gave you? My Aunt Penelope and her husband Eli began nodding in agreement, and my grandma caught up on it and began asking numerous questions. We had many vegan alternatives because Penelope is a vegetarian, and Claire had informed her that our grandma was not paying enough to cover the entire cost of the food. She informed Nicholas and Addison that they needed to help pay for the decorations. Our grandmother confirmed that she had given Claire and Zoe money for everything mentioned above. There was almost immediate fury at the table because Aunt Harper was not saying anything but appeared to be in tears. There was plenty of anxiety. Grandmother had to calm everyone down before she could ask Claire why she lied. Her voice was hardly audible, but her response was crystal clear. It was not my idea. That's when Zoe became so enraged that I was terrified he'd get violent. He screamed at Claire to hush her mouth. But my grandmother just quietly urged her to continue. I almost wish she hadn't. Not only did we realise how much deeper the lies went than we could have imagined, but I also discovered that I had been used from the start. As I already stated, Eleanor's salary as a teacher is low. So he works in advertising and does well. So he helped her out here and there as she needed it. He eventually discovered that she was putting all of the money he gave her into an Enan. She expected to triple her income to repay him while still earning enough to quit teaching. Instead, the plan backfired, putting her at risk of losing her home. Zoe couldn't afford to keep supporting her. But he knew Claire came from a wealthy family and advised her to seek assistance from our grandma. The issue was that our grandmother was not Zoe's biggest admirer. She has always been uneasy with their age difference despite the fact that they did not start dating until 10 years later. Claire was 13 and Zoe was 20 when they first met, which always made our grandmother uncomfortable. Instead of asking for a loan, Claire and Zoe decided to use the wedding to raise extra funds to assist Eleanor. That is also why Claire did not want Harper at her wedding. Despite her sobriety, Aunt Harper is still seen as the family's alcoholic black sheep who is always in need of money. Claire was concerned that if Harper asked Addison or Penelope for money, the money they gave Claire would come up in conversation. That nearly sparked a riot. I mean, I could see my mother clenching her fist. And I honestly thought she was going to stand up and clock my cousin for separating her and her sister so she could launder her wedding money. Some harsh criticism began to flow from both sides of the table. Neither Harper nor Grandma intervened to defend Claire from the onslaught. Even after the way she tried to use me, I felt sorry for her. I even felt sorry for Eleanor, although knowing she was in on it clarifies a few things. By the end of the meeting, Claire and Zoe had been utterly excluded from the family. My grandmother stated that if they wanted to be a part of this family anymore, they would repay her every dime she spent on the wedding. In the meantime, they will not go on their honeymoon. My grandma will use the money she was going to spend on their lodgings to repay Penelope and Addison instead. Harper, too, had no desire to interact with Claire. When Claire tried to apologise, Aunt Harper simply stared at her in tears and murmured, I'm sorry too. So, in short, I will not have to pay the invoice. I may have lost my cousin again, but that is up to her. I am not sure how long it will take me to forgive her. And it truly depends on whether she maintains her promise to repay everyone. Harper returned to the family, but it did not happen overnight. I hope Claire can learn from her example. Oh, and I think it's a good thing Claire and Zoe are excluded from the family because they were money laundering from their own family, taking advantage of individuals who were doing everything they could to make this wedding happen. They were paying for vegetarian meals, clothes, 
bachelorette parties, you name it.